all right so hello all let's begin with the session uh let me share my screen all right so am i audible and are you guys able to see my screen hello yes yes okay great so let's begin with the introduction so about me i am saurabh sahu and i'm having a 10 plus years of experience in data science or uh, technologies related to data starting from sql to big data hadoop or or lot many tools and technologies etl related tools and lot of programming stuff i'm also a senior scientist with government of india i am holding a graduated post i am also a recipient of national e governance award by government of india i am microsoft certified data scientist and also microsoft certified trainer i am also an active contributor to data science community contributing to various projects and helping people uh, to become a data scientist i have organized 100 plus workshop and uh, mentored or helped more than thousands of students so the idea or the purpose of this workshop is to help people to become a data scientist and orienting you all what data science is and how you can start or how you can become a data scientist or how you can start your data science journey so this is all about me and as i can see we we have not that many people so i think you all can also introduce yourself so yeah anyone can just start a quick introduction okay so i'll start yeah yes yeah can you hear me good to hear that someone took the lead yes yes sarth sarth yes. yeah. yeah hi i'm sharad uh, currently i'm working in uh, uh, etl and ssrs as well as uh, angular so recently i entered in the cloud so previously i watched a few uh, Uh, youtube videos from um, deepak goel from azure fundamentals mm -hmm. so i just uh, need to i know what the this session for okay yeah. okay yeah Thanks. next please just just a quick introduction of ourselves then we'll start with the main theme of this session yeah hussein oh uh, yeah sen i can see if you, i can just read few names sen kiran yeah. yeah yeah hi uh so i have 10 years experience in it uh, as a full stack developer basically uh, on microsoft.net stack and uh, currently i am working with infobeans as a senior consultant and over 10 years of experience i uh, demonstrated my skills in three different domains data storage cryptocurrency and healthcare and i am basically from indore great yes kiran or anyone who want to uh, just introduce Yeah, hi, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, Muhammad. Hi everyone. This is Muhammad Adisham here. I'm uh, working with UBS Bank in Singapore. So basically, I have around 15 years of experience into multiple uh, technology and 
multiple process work. So currently I'm uh, leading automation team over here. And also we are doing a lot of uh, data analytics. So from the SQL side, I have uh, Python experience and then working on different uh, analytics tool, Tableau, Power BI. Uh, currently we are going to uh, cloud. So we are working on the data bricks. And we also have planned to do some sort of you know, uh, machine learning stuff, uh, doing some data analysis, uh, data science stuff. Thank you. Okay. Great to have you, Mohammed. Yeah, next person, please. Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, very good evening. So I am Shubham Prato. I'm currently working as a database administrator uh for uh, two for around 2.5 years so right now i'm trying to uh, shift my technical domain into data analytics and data science so i'm very hopeful that i'll be able to gain a much meaningful insight from this uh, session okay great yeah next lakshi lakshia yeah hi all um, actually I am working with Entity Data as a Azure Data Engineer. Uh, currently, we are working on few uh, areas where uh, machine learning is involved. So I, jo I joined this session to know more on machine learning on Azure. And uh, I got into NTT because of uh, Deepak Goel's course. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's the reason I am here. Thanks for um, having this session in the evening. Okay. Like I'm from UK. Uh, I could not join in the morning. It was really early morning. So mm -hmm. in the evening, it is easy for me to join. Thank you so much for uh, having it in the evening. Yeah, same here. Thank you, Lakshi. Uh, yeah, Lisita. Uh, afternoon, everyone. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Surab, for inviting me. OK, so my name is uh, Lisita Mwepu. Uh, I'm from Zambia. And uh, how I got into the field of data science was that uh, I took an interest. It was my boss who talked about it because uh, when he was mentoring me, he was telling me, you know, there are so many people who have done networks and Cisco. Why don't you think about databases or data? So that's how I came across data science. And that's how I know the course. And I've been practicing self-practice for myself. And also now, eventually, I've also been applying it in my job. and. When I met Surab, he has been a mentor in a way. So mostly me and Surab are always interacting and he's always lecturing me. So that's who I am. And I also, lastly, I also work for a commercial bank in Zambia. OK. Thank you, Lisita. Yeah, next, Mohit. Yeah, hi, Soro. I am Mohit. Uh, I have approximately 11 years of experience. I'm working as a senior data engineer in one of the firm in Singapore. Um, um, basically, my work is related to Spark, uh, PySpark, uh, but currently we are moving to the cloud and uh, doing some data scientist, uh, data science activity. So that is why I am looking out for this courses. That is why I have joined this one. I mean, I'm just getting the overview of this one and take it ahead. What need to do then? Okay, thank you, Mohit. Yeah, Naresh. Thanks. Naresh, sign. Or Shashipal. Uh, hi, Surab. Uh, my name is Shashipal John. I'm basically from Indore, Madhya Pradesh. And I know uh, a little bit about uh, data science and machine learning. Uh, I want to know about the certification of Azure DP100. Uh, okay, our... great. So we will be covering. Uh dp100 as well in this workshop maybe today or or um, day after tomorrow yeah, yeah shiva right. yeah shiva uh 
Okay. So, okay, without wasting much time because it's a weekend, so I'm sure that you all uh, need to wrap this workshop at the earliest. So let's begin with uh, one of the my real experience or a story, you can say. So my grandfather used to run a grocery shop at a very a small place, you know, at the start of or the early 2000s. And uh, in this, it, it's a very small shop. It used to be a very small shop. And he, th this grocery shop, uh, so what he wanted, he wanted to uh, keep the stock of the hair oil. Okay. So you all know that there are hundreds of companies making hair oil product and more than thousands of product they are making. So hundreds of companies and making thousands of products. And this is a very small grocery shop. So which products he should keep in his inventory or uh, in the stock? Of course, he cannot keep all the products. Why? Because for one product, he need to keep at least four or five units. So you can imagine 1,000 into five units. So he needs 5,000 hair oil uh, products in his inventory. So the problem is it requires a huge capital. He need a lot of money. And not just money, he need a lot of big space in this small grocery shop to keep all these items. So it was a big problem for him. But he has a vision. He wanted to grow it. So what he did, he went to nearby people here in the nearby locality and ask and try to find out what or which hair oil product people use in the neighborhood or or you know nearby people he asked and accordingly they suggested some related to hindustan you need liver like in india we have a dawar aula or parachute so he started keeping let's say five hair oil products and his business start functioning so from 1000 he cut short and picked five hair oil products but he wanted to expand he wanted to grow further because he here he was just catering to nearby people but he has a big vision so now he wanted to he started doorstep delivery not through apps and all but he wanted to start the doorstep delivery and for that also the delivery is expanded now he wanted to deliver to uh, throughout the city but for that also he need to find out what is the preference of the people which hair oil they use so what he 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 has to do he can't go to each person and ask so what he did there was a person ram he was a very lazy person not even a graduate so my grandfather went to him and asked him, take this phone and start calling people and ask them what is their preference related to hair oil products. So he started calling a lot of people in and around the locality across the city. And they come up with around 10 hair oil products. So in this small grocery shop, he started keeping those 10 plus hair oil products and his start, his business was going good. Now I'm asking you question who this person Ram is. Anyone? Anyone who this person Ram is? He was a very lazy person and not even a graduate. For my grandfather and for me, he's a data scientist. You may laugh why I'm calling him data scientist. Because he is giving, he is the person who is giving insight to my grandfather's business. He is one of the key person because, because of him, I have reduced my capital. 
and I have increased my profits or you can say sales just because of his insight. What are the insight? He called people in and around the locality or in the town and he asked what hair oil they use and my grandfather used to keep those hair oil products in the shop only. So you can imagine this person, Ram, how important he is. He's not even a graduate. He's a very lazy person. And I will call him data scientist. So this is the role of a data scientist in any business. They are the key people in business. That is why you will see there's a huge demand or there is a high payout for data scientists. Right now, this this grocery shop was very small and still you can imagine how the data science or these insights helped my grandfather to grow his business were 10 times or or five times or or in n number of times now imagine the same situation with the big giants the the potential that data science has so if you talk about the big giants like netflix or amazon or flipkart or alibaba so there is a huge potential because these data science basically driving the businesses now here that in this scenario the data is the calls that ram is making but if you talk about in a bigger picture or when we talk about big businesses the data is being generated through your digital footprints so whatever you do you browse you whatever you do that is basically your digital footprints so that is the data that we are generating so the big companies saw a huge potential in it or they saw a huge potential in, in internet because internet is something through which we are generating this much of data. So companies, the big companies, they saw a huge potential in internet. So then from earlier, there was only 2G. We were used to make calls only. So they pumped a lot of money and came up with, so they tie up with telecom because they realize there is a huge potential in the data so they tied up with telecom you you may, may see that there is a huge stake of different companies in the telecom sector so they they pushed a lot of money and they come up with a 3g technology so internet is, people started using internet but again that was costly at that time so they again push more date more money they come up with 4g 4g is fast as well as cheap so now from 4g you may you will see there is a huge generation of the data and as i said the data is basically driving the businesses and that is why you may you may have observed that over the past few years the the charges that you are paying for your internet or for your mobile is all almost same uh, or, or or it's like a constant in india so there's not a big change in the charges of the data or internet. So why this is so everything is inflating, the inflation is high, every the prices are going high, but why not we, when we talk about the data or recharge? Because companies want you to use internet, companies want you to generate the data so that they can get the insight from that data and do their mainstream businesses. So now 5G is, about to come it's it's rolling out in developing nations in india also in coming months months or early next year you will see 5g network so this is all about a scenario so you can imagine the amount of data that we are going to generate in coming months or in in, in future so if there is a huge data definitely it has a huge importance it has a huge insights and through those insights companies can grow so that is why now that data is a raw data, right? So if you talk about hair oil product, somebody going to post a, a post on Quora that I am having a hair fall, I want hair oil, which hair oil is good. So there you can see that we are generating data on Quora. Similarly, you might be giving a comments in Amazon or maybe in Flipkart. You maybe you are liking certain hair oil product in Alibaba or some other uh system or platform so you are generating a data in different platforms 
and in a different format somewhere you are just writing a comment somewhere you are just doing the like kind of thing somewhere you are posting the question so you are generating the data in different different formats and different platforms so to to get that data and put it in a one place and finding out insight from it that require a skill so that is why the data scientists or data science related jobs are high in demand and this is all about a theoretical or or things that i feel that we should talk about let's come to some facts and figure so you uh, like we 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 have a smartphone we have a computers we have a hard disk that is of maximum 1 terabytes or we have a external drive of 4 terabytes but actually we have a data in gbs only if you exclude the data related to your movies or or videos you will have a data in gbs only so let's talk about some measurement in in terms of a data when we say terabytes or tbs it is about 1000 gbs similarly you have petabytes that is 1000 1000 terabytes you have exabytes and you have zettabyte so one zettabyte you can see here has 1 billion terabytes so you can imagine the amount of data it has your mobile your laptop will have only few gbs of data but one zettabyte basically 1 billion terabyte why i am discussing this units because you should know how data we are generating or how we are storing it in which units we are storing it every minute you can see that in the facebook we share 240000 photos every minute of a day so 240000 photos if a, if the size of one photo is 1 mb or in some kbs you can imagine just a facebook how much data he, that company is generating per minute or if you talk about twitter if you talk about amazon or you talk about youtube you can see that in one minute there is a 694000 hours of uh, video streaming so huge data we are generating every day there's a company called data age so what they do they work on uh, analysis or survey or getting the data uh, in the data science domain so as per their study by 2025 we are going to generate 175 zettabytes of data so 175 zettabytes means 175 into 1 billion terabytes of data so you can imagine the amount of data data we are going to generate in coming years and you may be surprised that 90% of today's data has been created over the last few years last 2 3 years you can say so data generation is directly proportional to the internet so as 4g came into picture we have a huge data generation so now 5g is also rolling out so you will have more data so the expect estimated is there that we will be are going to generate 175 zettabytes of data and you all know that these data is being generated by these companies and they are using that data and doing lot of uh, work related to data science domain so we all know netflix or amazon we all know that you know whenever we browse some e-commerce site we get uh, products related to our insight lot of predictions these companies are doing using their own data talking about the application i'm going to talk uh, only few domains where the there is a huge application of data science as we already talked about e-commerce so if it is amazon or flipkart alibaba or any e-commerce site they are using this data and doing data science when we talk about data science they are doing data analysis as well as they are doing machine learning or ai related stuff in the e-commerce domain to find out the targeted consumers to recommend product to the customer the product that customers will buy analyzing the reviews so that they can identify which products are good or having a more potential in terms of sales so there is a huge uh, domain or huge requirement of data science related people or or work in the e-commerce sector 
talking about healthcare healthcare is also a major uh, you can say domain where data science uh, is uh, is there or people are applying data science and there's a huge opportunity in this domain so when we talk about medical image analysis drug discovery bioinformatics or virtual assistant so now nowadays there are apps in which you just click the photograph of your chest x ray and that those apps will diagnose and give you uh, uh, predictions that what kind of what sort of illness you have or by looking at the prescriptions they can read the prescription written by doctors and give you or or you can order the medicines or you can have a virtual assistant doctors where you can give the symptoms and they will diagnose you or your illness and or, as well as they will give you cure to that illness so there is a huge demand in healthcare though it require our expertise but there is a huge uh, requirement coming to transport in transport industry as well there is a huge application of data science and you we all know that self driving cars the, there's a huge research going on and a lot of people like if they are almost in a final stage of giving the products in the real life uh, related to self driving cars not just self driving cars there is other applications like number plate plate reading or traffic violation detection of traffic violation by vehicles through machine learning or through ai enhancing the safety of passengers through ai like automatically detecting the faults in the engines and all so they are using those uh, uh, data science in in that particular domain talking about the banking and finance so you all know that in india we have upi system it is one of the most successful payment uh, method or you can say and 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 performing a huge number of transaction every minute every second so in the same way every country is going digital or going through towards a digital economy so banking is one of the major sector in that and there is a huge application of data science in the banking you can do fraud detection nowadays the, you, anyone can uh, you know do the data analysis use on the transaction and find out outliers or or find out transactions that violate some kind of a law credit risk modeling nowadays the system processes your loan application or <clears throat> you know you don't have to apply all the form and you don't have to go to teller or the clerk where he will do all this uh, uh, verification part the, there is a credit risk modeling through machine learning and it will automatically uh, profile your uh, you know basically do the profiling of, of uh, your details and give and sanction you the loan or may reject your loan so all those things can be done through data science in manufacturing industry also there is a huge application of data science like anomaly detection so through images or through camera one can find out earlier there was a labor involved who used to sort the defective product or, uh, and the and the good product in the manufacturing industry but nowadays those smart camera or you can say ai enabled camera they just detect the faults in the product and sort it out so there is a huge application in almost every industry i i have just mentioned the few good or you can say top most industries but there is a huge other industries like aviation or or biomedical this so very the data sciences easily can be applied so you you can imagine the kind of a data we are generating so of course you need people who can manage that data so one thing is so you have a big big data we are generating data now that data is as i already said it is been generated in different formats and different platform so that has to be streamlined for that i basically brought this kind of job into two parts one thing i call it as data engineering or data engineer and the other one is data scientist further i mean like this is my per, uh, perception about the data or or jobs related to data 
but you can further break it down related to statistician, mathematician, or decision scientist, so, or the ML ops or machine learning engineer, you can break it down. But I broadly divide the uh, the jobs or designation into two parts. So you, you have a raw data, you need to pull that data from different uh, sources and put it at the, at the single source, or you can say at the data warehouse, and then you have to process that data, you have to convert that data uh, into a meaningful format. And after that, the data scientist job comes into play. The, the, the data science scientists basically extract that information and extract the key insight from that data that will basically drive the business or that will help the business to grow. So uh, coming to theoretically uh, or in industry, we have data scientists. And if you have a you know, um, good uh, years of experience, you can be a data architect or data engineer or statistician or data science manager, machine learning engineer, decision scientist. So there is a huge number of uh, designation, but overall the work or the job description is more or less same. And this is basically, you can say bifurcation in a big companies, but there are a good startups who are doing really good in the data science domain. So for them, only one or two people, they do a part of data engineer as well. Data scientists, they are data scientists also, they are programmers also, they do everything. So uh, one should know all the domain starting from data engineering to data scientists or data analysis. Coming to, uh, as I already said, there is a huge data. So there is a huge demand of data scientists. So coming to some facts, by 2024, there will be 2.5 lakh uh, data scientist jobs in the market. Out of five, there will be three uh, data scientists or, or jobs related to data scientists in the finance, IT, and professional services. Average salary as per Forbes is around uh, $1 million. And uh, in India also, I, I have seen that uh, the average salary is really high in, in the data science domain or if you have a little bit of experience also, you can get a good package in data science domain. Why this is so? Because uh, salaries are, why this data scientist job is good, or you can say uh, it's more lucrative. Reason being good salary. They say easy to grab a job, but yes, it is not that easy to grab a job. Uh, growing demands. It is evolving field. Every day, new algorithms are coming uh, up. People are tweaking in the processes. New tools are coming up. Almost like on like every month, I see new APIs and new libraries in the data science domain. Most importantly, it is adding value to business. Like in my example, my grandfather's example, he won't because the, the data scientist or the RAM is helping him to drive his business. So he won't mind giving the commission to RAM uh, from his profit. So in the same way, because these data scientists is driving the businesses or helping or adding values to the business, so companies won't mind them paying good. Now, easy to grab a job. Uh, no, it is not that easy to become a data scientist or get a job related to data scientists. Why this is so? Because uh, in data science domain, it is not just a technology. If you know Python, if you know SQL, doesn't mean that you will become a data scientist or you know machine learning algorithm. I have seen people who know algorithm very good. Uh, you know they have a good knowledge in data science domain, but still they are not getting jobs. And I have seen these coaching institutes or training institutes, uh, you know, charging a hefty amount to students or fresher in the name of data science, uh, science or data scientist, and they are not getting jobs. Reason being, data science is uh, less technology, I will call it, and more business or a domain knowledge. So for that, experience comes into a big picture, and one need to have a little or good experience or should have a good understanding of the businesses, how businesses run, or what kind of domain uh, you are into. So you need to have a good understanding of the domain not just domain, you need to have a good analytical skills as well. <laughs> now, how you can become a data expert or you can say data scientist. So basically, uh, the first 
thing is you need to build your foundation so when i say build your foundation you need to know basic programming or or you need to have a good analytical skills then you need to know basic of statistics or probability why because uh, data science is uh, is divided into two parts data analysis and and the prediction part so when we say prediction uh, you need to know the probability so statistics basics of statistics you don't need to be a statistician for data scientists you need to learn basics of statistics maybe mean median mode how distribution work what are the kind of distribution so basic things you need to know the probability various types of probability and a little bit of algorithms related to probability you can learn any of the programming language python or r right i prefer python reason being it is more popular and having a good uh, community whenever you stuck in something you will definitely get a resource for that after that uh, you have a to perform a exploratory data analysis for that you can so what this is basically an analysis so you can do analysis in python also you can do analysis in sql also you pick any database mysql ms sql or oracle and you can do eda in that you can use visual uh, the tools like power bi tableau to do the eda and like you know if you learn the statistic probability you learn python you can start with a small things like i'll give you my example i <clears throat> one day i was free and i was like uh, you know we i had a fight with my wife because she was more uh, spending money on online shopping so <clears throat> i wanted to restrict her so i was free so i downloaded all my uh, financial details transactions from various account and i started analyzing using uh, python or or sql you can say so i got a very good insight that we you know whatever the amount we are spending in online shopping i am spending more amount uh, of money in uh, transportation or you can say my fuel consumption was high and i was not focusing myself into that particular area or, or to reduce the fuel consumption instead of that i was focusing on on reducing the online shopping at a cost of making my wife uh, unhappy so you can imagine the kind of impact so that is a very basic eda that you can do in your own data you can visualize that <coughs> now uh, once you have a data analysis like what my experience says is most of the people or most of the job stops here only related to data science domain because not every company is doing a machine learning or ai related stuff why because you need a lot of money to uh, you know work on data science or machine learning related stuff so big giants they are spending a lot of money in research and re and related things but small companies <clears throat> they want to spend money on certain things machine learning is not about certain things it's about uncertainty it is just giving you prediction it is just giving you chances so a uh, lot of work of data scientists stops here at uh, point number 4 but after that we have a machine learning models that is that talk more about predictions <coughs> prediction in terms of uh, numbers like house price prediction you can say very basic example where you need want to predict the price of a house so you can use any of the regression model or you wanted to find out whether a particular person is going to buy a particular product or not so yes and no so that we call it classification model so you can build any kind of model and generate the predictions or perform the prediction for that you can write the code also you can use the libraries like tensorflow or keras or scikit learn to do the machine learning models another way if you don't want to do lot of programming you can use azure cloud platform you can use uh, aws platform where you don't have to do much of the programming you can use ready to build uh, in azure we have in azure we have machine learning studio where you can do a lot of things using drag and drop so we will be learning that tomorrow you can also work on big data related tool you can 
<clears throat> do a uh, lot of data analysis related to big data using those tools available in the market. Few are open source, few are paid ones. After that, you want to move one step ahead, you can do artificial intelligence or you can do deep learning models where the self-driving car or, no, or the chess games or, or very smart systems come into picture. You can visualize your model. So whatever you are doing, machine learning and thing, you need to know what is the accuracy of your model. You need to know how sure your model is or whether the results or the things that your model is predicting whether they are correct or not. So you need to know the outcome. You need to know the accuracy. So you need to learn all those concepts. After that, uh, if you know all those things, you can take one or two real world project. You can take help. Uh, you can find out opportunities in your existing project because I have seen a lot of people, they are not directly working into data science or machine learning, but they are working in certain domain. Like a lot of people are working in banking domain but they are doing application development but they can they know the domain they know the banking so what they can do they can pick any of the project related to banking like fraud detection or outlier detection so they can uh, do the, those kind of projects now once you know through this roadmap you can learn the data science or data analysis after that knowledge was well, somebody has to be there to certify that knowledge so for certifying that knowledge, you need to go to certain certification. Though I don't believe much in certification, but yes, as the trend is there, you can go for, there is not much certifications available in data science domain, but one such certification is DP100. So that, that is, so whatever I, I we talked about this, uh, uh, basically nine points. So from these points only, your DP100 question comes into picture. It's a good certification. I am a Microsoft Azure Data Scientist uh, associate certification that you can also opt for. Around it's, it costs around one sixty dollar. Uh, basically, again the questions come from the data sets, set related gathering data set. How to use this data set in Azure platform? How to create experiment? How to create a models in Azure? How to train your model in Azure? How to deploy that? model in in azure or how to evaluate your model how your model is performing and and when you talk about deployment how to create uh, your model as a service so that you can develop mobile application or desktop application or web application that will use those models in the back end and predicting things so all the questions will be related to these topics only but they will be more into more related to how you can do those things in Azure. So this is all about DP100. We can, I, I have a few slides uh, which talk in detail, but for that you need to know what data science is or how you how things work in Azure. So what we are going to do tomorrow, tomorrow we are going to have a session with, on Azure uh, Machine Learning Studio where I will demonstrate you my own case study. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate you or or help you in how we are creating or how we are using Azure machine uh, Azure machine learning studio where uh, like a normal project that, like recommender system or house price prediction I'm going to demonstrate you the case study of a real world problem which somebody uh, uh, was doing it and he took help of me so I can just now I will not show you the exact details but I'll show you how things work and how we solve that problem using the machine learning and that too in the cloud environment. We use Azure for that, how we did that. We will talk about it. So this is all about the, the data science or, or the things that you can do in the data science domain. Now I am open for questions. Uh, so if you have any doubt in this, so far, whatever we have learned, we can discuss. Yeah. Hello. 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 Hi, Saurabh. Yeah, hi. Uh, no, no questions or anything. Just wanted to thank you for this introductory class and uh, I'll look forward to further sessions. Okay. Thank you.
Yeah, any so other on. question <clears throat> related to data science, related to the course, related to cloud, whatever um, you feel you are open to ask anything. Yes, yes, Lisita, you want to ask something? Uh, yeah, I think first of all, it's just a commendation. Thank you very much for coming up with this uh, presentation. It's very been informative. And uh, I think I just now wanted to, I think maybe I might have missed it in the presentation. So these jobs that we see for data science, uh, how best can we approach them and tackle them? Because you find that you can answer everything in the test. Then I think in the interviews, sometimes you find that uh, hiccups on interview questions. So what is the strategy of handling that? I think maybe you just maybe if you can guide us. Yeah. So you know, uh, there's two things. Few people for in interview focus on theoretical aspect, and but most of the companies they focus on what you did or how deep your knowledge is, practical knowledge I would say. So there, um, your explanation, your project matters a lot. So whatever you write in your resume has to be very precise. It has you should have a good knowledge of it. And in in a, so you know if if an interview somebody asks you random for us, it is very uh, you know difficult to explain also and for interviewer also to understand it. So in in place of uh, you know going into technical aspect, one should first give the overview of the project or what problem you have solved using the uh, because what I have my personal experience is in businesses nobody cares how you solve how you are solving the problem. Important important is you are solving the problem. So you need to know your uh, what strategy you have applied, what problem you picked in your existing project, how you solved it, and what you were doing in that project, what was your contribution in it, and then comes the technical aspect. So uh, you should be thorough with with your projects or whatever you mention in your resume. You should be thorough with it, and then uh, comes to the technical aspect. You should be good in uh, basically data visualization and a uh, few of the concepts of machine learning because my personal exp experience is not even interviewers they don't know uh, machine learning in depth most of the time so you need to have a good you need, you need to present the pointers uh, related to your answer so that they can better uh, understand yeah yeah satya you can ask your question uh, hi sarab so I'm working in IT from like last nine years and my majority of my experience is based on SQL. So these days for any of these data science or machine learning applications, Python really became my mainstream, Python and R. What do you suggest as a good starting point to start understanding and learning Python? Okay. so. Um, I, I, I like I take Python uh, sessions also, and uh, starting with Python, so you need to understand the programming as Python as a programming language, and then you have to do uh, the the practical aspects of Python, like how you can scrap the data from the site, how you can connect to databases from the Python, how you can perform the automation testing or automation script, how you can write in uh, Python. So all those things are there. So what I did, I divided the course into two parts, Python basics and Python advanced. Uh, so it is available online. You can uh, take that. Uh, I can offer you for free as well because you are the part of this workshop. So I can give you for free. So it's around 15 hours of basic Python and around eight hours of advanced Python. Uh, thank you, Saurabh. Yeah. Thank you so much, Saurabh. So is, will, there, will those be like YouTube sessions or is, is there any an, on your private platform? or? Yeah, they are on my private platform. They are recorded sessions, so you can go through it. You need to um, you know, send me a message on WhatsApp with your email ID, name, okay. and mobile number. So I'll create a credentials for you. And then you can. I'll share the URL through which you can log in and view the courses. Sure, sir. That will be really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? 
Yeah, Deepali. Uh, hi, Sarab. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you for the lovely session. Uh, I just wanted to ask, can you please brief uh, about what exactly we are going to learn in this Azure Data course? Okay, so uh, so it's a three-day workshop. The first one is about the orientation, what, what data science is and what you can do with the data science, what are the job opportunities in data science. Tomorrow, what we are going to talk about the, is more on to the machine learning or data science in the Azure Cloud Platform. Okay. okay. So mm -hmm. most of you are aware of the Azure uh, Cloud, or you might have a login related to Azure as well. So what we are going to do, we are going to, uh, I'll show you how to start working on Azure Machine Learning Studio, uh, and I'll show you the one case study. Uh, I'll demonstrate you how, how I solved that uh, problem. What was the problem in that case study? All those things we will discuss tomorrow. Uh, will you be uh, showing us uh, integration part also, like uh, if we are working, uh, doing some kind of coding in Python, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to, you know, uh, move our data, integrate our data from Python to Azure. Uh, Okay, so that is a very easy task, and a few line of codes is required for that. We will be um, not. I'm not going to cover in this three days workshop because these are these are just three hours. Uh, probably after that, uh, I'm going to create a or the complete batch for data science. That would be around two and a half months program. There, um, I'm going to discuss each and everything in detail. We will be doing a hands-on. We will be doing the coding part. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, basically, what happens, I have learned uh, machine learning and all, but uh, the integration part, which company, um, most of the company requires, I uh, mm -hmm. nobody uh, teaches us in, in depth. Okay, so that is the only part. I would say the deployment part is <laughs> left for me to learn. I mean, okay, okay. So, so we can have a one on one session for that also, but not yeah. uh, maybe like I, I love to teach you that and because that is one of my area of specialization so i, I would love to uh, you know share my knowledge on to it so we can have a hands-on session may not be in these uh, three hours but later on you you can schedule one on one session no issue and it is not going to take much time if you know azure if you know programming it is not going to take much time sure sure sir thank you so much yeah so you can build an automation job as well. You can do integration through Python. You can use the, the, the notebooks in the Azure platform and do that. No, not a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Saurav. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for this wonderful session. So I mean, uh, uh, so what I have understood that you after this three days, you are going to be conduct uh, yeah. courses for two and a half months, right? Yeah. Yes. And and that course is going to be cover all the DA DP hundred, right? DP hundred. Yes. 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 DP hundred. Okay. And uh, apart from certification, do you cover the real time uh, project as well? I mean, so that I can show at least a year or half year of one and a half year of experiences in uh, Azure Data Science. Is it possible? Yes. So whatever I I'm I'm not a teacher. I'm not a I'm basically from the industry and doing up. I'm I'm like I find myself I'm fortunate enough to work on a big data because there are hardly few people who who work on the terabytes of data. So being associated into government do domain, I, I used to work in a big data where there is a terabytes of data or petabytes of data. So uh, I prefer to give you or explain you things through, through the real world problems or, or you can say real world projects not the basic project that you will find the recommender system or house price prediction or or, or finding app classifying the apple and the oranges so we will be doing the real world project so all my sessions will will have the case studies and all okay so basically i can be an individual contributor in the azure data science in a in our team it's yes a... yes yes okay and how soon you are planning to conduct this class uh soon you will be in, you will get an intimation mail or or uh, in a whatsapp group probably by the end of this month and i hope you will take care of other time zone as well apart from india i wanted to 
let's see depending upon the uh, the participants we'll go with the majority but yes i'll i'll um, i'll take care of it okay cool so you are you are planning uh, planning to conduct in weekdays as well what i have understood it is it right uh it it would be three days a week probably uh, friday saturday sunday or saturday sunday monday something like that okay okay fine fine thanks sir yeah thank you any other questions yeah hi sir yeah uh so i just wanted to know that how i mean how tough is the journey for like transition for you know for, uh, i'm working as a database admin okay right now so for me mm -hmm. like how how tough is the journey for switching uh, into data science because uh, for me oh. i think the main challenge is uh, statistics i know python programming i know uh, because i have used programming for creating shell scripts and all okay so the, mm -hmm. i i don't think lot uh, since i have the knowledge of logic so it won't be a mm -hmm. much a problem for uh, grasping python but what about the statistics mm -hmm. i mean how deep is it <laughs> okay so you don't need to um, you know get uh, afraid of statistics in machine learning uh, you know especially when you talk about deep learning or ai there comes a real or you can say hardcore statistics or a uh, lot of things involved but when you talk about a machine learning that usually company work on or data analysis in which the company work on the basic statistic is required and that statistics you also use in your real life though you don't know actually whatever you are doing is a, is a part of a statistics only so i will be covering a lot of uh, uh, topics related to statistics like uh, you know not just mean median mode and and distribution the actually how you are applying it and how you can correlate it in your real life as well as in your project so we will be doing that uh, not just the theory part uh, also with the probability uh, you know we will be doing how that probability affect the businesses and uh, we will be taking a real world examples to understand those concepts so you don't have to worry about it but yes uh, you need so because you are transiting from one domain to another certainly you have to put a lot of efforts i will not uh, you know uh, give you false hope you need to put a lot of efforts into it and, and, and it, it is just okay. like a 2 3 months you need to work hard but there will be a good payouts and a good career afterwards okay. so there's no harm in uh, working hard for a couple of months yeah. thank you Yes, any other question? Okay. Uh, yes, Sarah, uh, yeah. will you be covering Databricks as well in this course? Yes, we'll be covering Databricks. Okay, fine, fine. Thanks. Oh, uh, sorry, I'm Sharad. Mm, yeah, 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 hi. Yeah. I have a total experience. Uh, I have a total five experience, five plus experience in IT. Mm -hmm. Currently, I'm working in uh, uh, ETL and uh, SSRS, mm -hmm. as well as uh, I work in Angular. Mm -hmm. But uh, I still dilemma to go to the data engineering and data scientist. So, according to my current experience, which one is better? Okay. So, what exactly your work is right now? uh it's a uh, full of the sql we extract the data so mm -hmm. using the etl tool and mm -hmm. developing the design using the ssrs mm -hmm. so you are more into um, databases and reporting right yes yes so what is your interest so this is what you are doing and what is your interest is it uh is it the work that you are doing currently whether you like that yeah but current uh past one year uh, there is no uh, much work in that so mm -hmm. currently i've worked in that uh, uh the developer role that is the angular mm -hmm. okay. so i'm interested in cloud but uh, among those two roles uh, data engineer or data scientist uh, yeah I'm not so con looking at uh, your current work you are already doing a lot of data analysis because reporting is one of the big part of data analysis 
right? You are already yeah. doing you are writing SQL queries, right? Yeah. You are handling databases. Only thing is you are handling the tabular data, right? So um, I, I believe I or I can advise you because you are already into that domain. You can start learning the Power BI Tableau or Python programming, and you can easily switch to data analysis analysis role. Or uh, if you want to move further, you can start learning the machine learning as well. And I believe because you you know one you already know one good pillar of data science that is SQL. You need to start working on your programming Python programming, and you can easily switch to that. So it's more about to data engineering, you say. Data engineering is a different thing. Data engineering is more about data um, extraction, transformation. You know, extracting data from different sources, putting it into the warehouses. Uh, you will be basically, you know, uh, working on flow of data and all. You're not going to work on the insights related to data. So that is also very good field, very blooming nowadays. So for data engineering, you need to start learning a cloud, maybe Azure Cloud or AWS or GCP. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Any the question. Yes, Mohit. Uh, I just wanted to know why you have chosen uh, Azure Data Scientist. No more. Why not AWS Data Scientist with respect to technical aspects? Yes, good question. I I like I started uh, uh, doing things on AWS uh, like two years ago and did a lot of work on AWS. But as far as the current industry demand or or the the way the Microsoft is putting money as well as capturing the clients or uh, they have the Azure platform is really good. Uh, earlier it was not, but after that I find it very good compared to AWS and not just good in terms of cost as well and the services and the 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 way the people are adopting to it, the companies they started using Azure Cloud. So because the companies are using it, so definitely um, there is a huge demand on Azure side. Compared to AWS nowadays, earlier there was AWS only. But still, sort of, I can see the that there are a huge stack of AWS as compared to Azure in market. Yes, no, but uh, if you compare uh, the current scenario, the the Azure has a has a edge right now, and uh, they are progressing. They are progressing, but still they haven't over overta overtaken to AWS. And 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 so uh, and second thing is it's easy to use. And apart from that, the concepts is same in all the cloud platform. You have the same compute instances. You have the same GPU instances. You have only the terminology or the way of using is different. Everywhere you need a security. Everywhere you need firewalls or the key vault. Everywhere is there. So the concept will be same. Only the thing is that name of the tool is different. So and I cannot cover all the three cloud platform. But yes, uh, if people want, I can cover that also. Uh, it's more or less same for me. Only thing is, they of the cost parameter is different, and the way way the the nomenclature or the way of using it is different. But the concepts is same in all the play, cloud platforms. But do you think the data is safe in Azure? Yes, yes, yes. Because I I can see that the banking are using AWS. I mean, uh, but they are not using Azure. Very few. I mean, I haven't seen any bank that, as far as I know. No, no, no. They have started using it. They have started mining. So it, it all depends upon the way business agreements are earlier because AWS took a lead. They have an agreement. They have uh, people have started like uh, they have transformed their data into into AWS. But now people have started using Azure also. I have people, uh, you know, in the industry, in the banking as well. They are started shifting towards Azure because of the cost and uh, in premises business is also huge. Okay, and what is the is of certification from, let's say, DP hundred to D DP sorry DP nine hundred to DP hundred, and after that, what is that? DP hundred. After then, after DP hundred. That is associate level, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And what about the expertise level? Which certification is there after that? DP hundred. 
there there is an architect also okay which covers the data scientist uh, syllabus yes yes okay okay, okay cool bye okay. any other question uh sourav i just wanted to know more about the data bricks part that you told uh mm -hmm. so i had learned a few things from the uh, azure data engineer course initially from deepak but i wanted to know more about the data bricks part so you said you will be covering it in the classes so will it be mm -hmm. after this 3 days class or uh, no that I will mean, be so if you are already taking uh, data engineering course from deepak he is also going to cover it or uh, in the data i will be covering more related to data science domain yeah i wanted to know in the data science domain because i in my uh, company i had to handle uh, multiple scenarios relevant to it so i really wanted to know about the data science front uh, that's the reason i wanted to know i had already learned it from deepak's course so i mm -hmm. wa i wanted to know about uh, the data science part yeah we will we, we will be uh, uh, covering the data breaks and you know uh, doing the coding also in the okay. notebook so we will be doing that okay thank you thank you sir yeah. any other question okay i think no more question so tomorrow uh, 8:30 morning we will be having a case study uh, related to one of the businesses Uh, and how we have used Azure Machine Learning platform to solve that problem. So um, be on time. If you are interested to move further, you can join tomorrow uh, early morning at eight thirty a.m. IEST. Any other question? You know, not just data science. You can ask anything. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Uh, your courses will contain uh, i mean it will cover the performance tuning as well right performance tuning and debugging all these things yes so if you if you talk about the uh, there is different aspects so if you are working on sql so there is a performance tuning in sql as well where we have to do optimization and all or if you are talking about the machine learning models performance hmm. uh, there is a different aspect of it so yes so for machine learning we will be covering it when we deploy it we will see the how to use the gpus or how pro performance differ in various environment or how you can do the performance tuning of any model okay so you are going to be cover performance tuning as well as debugging as well yes yes okay and uh, what uh, what about the data are you going to be in project uh, you are going to be analyze on the batch data or streaming data batch data not streaming not streaming data okay okay so streaming data then kafka comes into picture or you know other things comes into azure picture. iot is also there right yeah, azure iot, yeah azure. let's say i have a fitbit uh, smart watch so i want to analyze all those things so i mean do we need to do something extra in that or uh yes you need to do a little bit of data pipeline related things so that is a different part Though if 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 majority demands that also we can cover not an issue. Okay. But as of now it's not in um, my curriculum you can say. But yes, if people want we can include. Mm -hmm. But I think if if you will include one project on streaming also, <laughs> in streaming data analysis will be benefited for the group as well. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll, we'll think about it. It's a good suggestion I would say. So mm -hmm. I'll try to include it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Aro. Looking forward for your next class. Yeah, oral house the uh, session. Yeah, it so. was quite interactive, good and informative. Mm -hmm. From my end. Thank you. Any any other people who want to give a feedback? Any sort of feedback? Uh, it was an amazing session, Aro. So for me, uh, completely into data engineering, data science was uh, really an eye opener. so i wanted to know more about it uh, as i had different streams uh, in my company where i had to work along with data scientist so so no more is really uh, fantastic thanks for this amazing session
thank you thank you lakshi uh, any other person okay great hey, Surab, yeah I, yeah this is uh, yeah. yes yes okay uh i just wanted to find out for the session mm -hmm. tomorrow i don't know if you have another one like this around this time or you are going to record it in case we miss it because sometimes due to the time zones you find that maybe when the session is starting it's maybe maybe like still morning and maybe yeah, an hour ahead of us or three hours or four hours ahead of us i i totally understand i don't want to disturb you uh, that morning so what we can do is um, i'll give you i'll share I, I won't be conducting a evening session uh, there will be morning session only but yes i will be sharing a recordings for that so you can just uh, i would like to have the recording as well sure for me as well it is early in the morning uh, mm -hmm. so it will be really okay. great if you share the recording okay okay so i'll i'll share um, on on whatsapp group the links yeah, of thank you Any other person who want to give a feedback? Yes, sort of. I mean, the one which I have already repeated it, but still I want to repeat it. Uh, emphasis more on this. Please mm -hmm. take care of overseas student as well. Yeah, I understand. While conducting your uh, two and a half months of course. Yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah, sure. That's it. Thanks. OK, so we'll conclude the session uh, for today. And tomorrow uh, you can join me uh, at 8.30 a.m. IST. Try to be on time. Those who are interested and those who want to learn something new, I'm, I'm sure you're, maybe like you all know data related stuff, but uh, there must be something that or fruitful that you have uh, got from this session. And tomorrow also you will get few good stuff. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Zorro.